Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm the Strategy Professor, and today we're going to be going over Team Fight Tactics Ranked, which is going to get released on Wednesday, the 17th. Um, so this is still going to be considered a beta, but it is going to have rewards at the end, and it is going to have a ranked system in it. So really quick, I just wanted to explain what the ranked system is, and what I think will be the best strategies to help you rank up quickly. So this is going to be some good, honest advice, not clickbait, not super generic stuff real stuff you can use to help you think about the game and improve your play. So if you enjoy the content, please be sure to like and subscribe. I do have other guides on the channel as well. I am going to release a tier list of all the champions um, probably after this video. So I'm going to I'm going on vacation this week, but I'm going to time the videos to where you get one per day. And I'm probably going to release two TFT videos, two league videos, and then we'll just kind of see what the what the fourth or the fifth videos are. Um, but yeah, be sure to check all that out. I am streaming on Twitch now as well. I think a lot of people haven't realized that I've moved over there. We're still going to do a ton of content on YouTube, and I am eventually going to upload the streams from Twitch uh, onto YouTube as well with the timestamps. But I did release a video that explained why I was moving over to Twitch. I just think it's a better platform um, for the kind of content that I create right now. Um, so be sure to come check it out. I did just get affiliate. I've had people asking me about that all week as well. So that means that you can subscribe if you want to. And most importantly, you can get a transcoder now whenever I stream, which means you can lower the quality. So if you can't watch it at 1080p because of your internet connection or whatever, you should be able to lower it down to 720 or 480 or whatever you're most comfortable with. So I just got affiliate today. Um, so all of that is open. It's good. And we're going to be working our way towards partner to get even more perks over the next month or so. But let's go ahead and get in here. So as always, you can find timestamps in the description if you don't have time to watch the whole video. And I'll also have a link to this Google Doc on the left over here. Um, go ahead and put the camera up there so it's out of the way. Um, Google Doc on the left, you can access that as well if you just kind of want to skim through. Okay, so over here we have kind of the patch notes that are coming out. And some things have changed as well. Um, I think they are going to do all of the future changes on the same patch as they update League. They have currently been changing it every few days on live, but I think they're going to go to a more standardized patch cycle now. Um, so some of the major things that have changed meta-wise over time is they nerfed Spear of Shojin to where it's only 15% mana back instead of 20. They nerfed Pike fairly recently so that he doesn't stun for as long with his ultimate. Um, they buffed Varus a couple of patches ago. I think they lowered the mana cost on his arrow to 75 from 100. Uh, they nerfed Aurelian Soul. I think he requires 125 mana and doesn't start with any. And they nerfed the damage on his ult from 300 to 250 at level 1, and then 50 at every level thereon. Uh, and they made a couple of other adjustments, but I think those are the big ones. They did nerf Zeke's as well a while ago, but that's just kind of where the meta is. Um, as far as balance changes that are happening on Wednesday, at least it's going to become a one-cost unit, which is going to make her very, very strong. I mean, I talked about this in my tier list video. I think a lot of people are going to be sleeping on Elise. Um, she's still pretty good right now, but I think she's going to be exceptionally good after that because she puts so much health on the board, especially for what's going to be a one-star champion. You're going to get three spiders, which is uh, 500 health each. So that's 1,500 health, and then she has 900. So that's 2,400 health once she transforms that you're putting onto the board. And that's just really hard to deal with because even if you kill her, you still have to deal with the spiders. Now, I don't know exactly how much damage those spiders do, but they certainly do um, clog up the board. And it makes her particularly good against uh, Brand, who's very, very strong. We'll talk about that here in a little bit, because the spiders can soak up Brand ults as well. Um, and they can even tank for you. It, like Once your tank's down on the front line, they can still help protect your back line even more, the Draven or the Varus or whoever you have on their back line. So I think that's going to be a really big deal, especially because you compare her early with Varus who is considered one of the best carries right now. So I think she's got a lot of really good stuff going for her, um, and I would highly, highly expect to see more of her uh, combinations with her and maybe Varus early on. So that's a pretty significant change. And then demons in general now deal 100, 200, and 300% of their mana burned. Usually don't see full demon comp. Some of the champions in there are pretty bad. Um, but Varus and Elise are both very good. Brand is very good, and Swain's very good. So there's a decent chance that you could see the four demon comp, and that's only that's the only time this is going to be relevant is if you have four, because currently it does burn for the full 100 at all ranks. So it's only going to matter if you have four demons. So it's not as big of a deal as it seems, but if you do go for that four, if you do have the Brand and the Swain later on, Swain is also a shapeshifter, which combines well with Elise. Um, you compare that together with something like a Nidalee. 
Um, so there are definitely some synergies there where you might see four demons from time to time. Um, but likely it's going to be overkill. Most of the time it's just going to be Varus and Brand or maybe at least in Brand. Okay, Br uh, Frozen Heart rather is attack speed is slowed by 25% rather than 20%. It's a really boutique item. You don't see that a lot. Usually tiers are better spent on things like Spear of Sojin if you can get them or Archangels on certain champs. But there might be some cases early on where you do want to put it on a tank. And so having that on someone like a Cho'Gath is probably the best case scenario because he really wants the mana. He has a super high impact ult if he gets there. The armor will help him stay alive so you need somebody who wants both mana and armor um, and can stay alive long enough to really get some good use out of that attack speed slow there so another option might be to put it on an assassin or something who's jumping to the back line so that you can slow their ad carry um so you know you could throw that on like a kha'zix or an akali or something like that wouldn't be terrible um you obviously don't want to put it on someone like Cassidan or graves or frontliners like that that don't really use mana so it's a niche item you're probably not going to see it a lot but it's nice to see a little buff there um hextech gunblade there aren't many champs that get that but for the ones that do get it you can uh life steal for a little bit extra so that's going to be good with champions that have like some hybrid damage uh red buff is getting a buff now now it used to burn for two and a half seconds and i'm not sure how long it lasted but if it lasted for the five seconds before then it used to burn for um 12 and a half percent over five so this may not be that big of a deal but it could be, it's a little bit of a buff, I think, for Red Buff and Morello. You don't see those that often. Red Buff is very good on Graves, but you don't see it on many other people. And then Morello and Nomicon can be pretty good on your mages, um, especially if you think they're going to have a lot of healing. But it's going to be situational. Runins, it's tough to say what's going to go on with this. Um, you get a spirit who mirrors your attacks, but only does 25% of the damage. So I don't know if that includes ult. I don't know if that includes, if that like triggers on hit effects. I don't know what that means, so we'll just have to see that in action, but that's an interesting change. Uh, Guardian Angel, when someone gets revived, they get one extra rank, So and they have 500 HP, so we'll see how that goes. I mean, maybe on some champs that could be good, but I think it's still just going to be for like all caps videos. It, maybe. Maybe we'll see more of it. Um... War Mogs, you get 6 regen, max regen per second. So that's actually pretty huge, especially on champions that um, are like rank 3 champions, 3-star champions, All obviously you're going to have a ton of health. But on things like Cho'Gath or even something like Cassidy, who has really high effective health because of how many shields he generates, um, that could be a pretty good option. And there aren't many good options for Giant's Belt, so... This is going to add an extra little um, bit of punch there. And I'm glad they're buffing up a lot of these defensive items because really it's all about the offense most of the time. Like the hard carries just outscale the tanks big time in most comps. So I'm liking that they're making it a bit more appealing. Like you don't feel like you completely lost if you got a couple of Giants belts or like a Negatron cloak and, you know, a Giants belt or whatever. You can you can do something with your Negatrons, your Giants belts, and your Chain Fests early. So that's good. Uh, Zeke's is a nerf. So you do get 15%, but it's important to keep in mind down here, Zeke and Locket only affect people in the same row. So right now you can affect up to eight people, right? If you put one champion in the middle, you have two champion spots on the side and then three on the bottom, three on the top that it can touch. So you can affect up to eight champions right now. With this change, you're only going to be able, well, nine if you include yourself in the middle. So you can get the whole comp buffed up. Um, but, uh, well, mate trying to think of the geography there it's close enough if it's not nine it's like seven anyways you can you can buff up a lot of people with it but now it's only going to be able to buff up three max yourself and then two other people that are like right next to you in the same row so yes they are increasing the amount to 15 percent, but it's going to be an overall nerf most of the time and it's a huge nerf to um lock it so zeke's is getting a little bit of a compensatory buff so smaller nerf overall but really big nerf on locket which is great because locket is so abusive right now if you didn't know you can stack lockets on a champion especially a sorcerer and put a bunch of ap on that champion and the shield scales with ap and so they, you just give out like you know an 800 shield to your whole team it's really really op so i'm glad they're addressing that some i hope eventually they'll put in unique um item passive so that you can't stack the same item on the same champion i think that's going to create a lot of balance issues it has several times with like Spear of Sojin on Pike, Locket stacking, 
Um, it's just a lot of a lot of items where you stack them up on the same champion you have problems. So they're not doing that this patch, but maybe in the future. Uh, spatula items get extra stats. So you know if you turn your turn someone into a sorcerer with your spatula, they'll get 40 AP instead of just 20. That's a pretty good change of pace to make the spatula feel a little bit more rewarding when you don't get um, force of nature and when you don't really make some game breaking um, adjustment with your combinations. So. Pretty good. And then Gensu's is getting a little bit of an attack speed buff to 4%. I thought it was already an okay item. I'm not really sure why they're buffing it, but nice there. They are changing item randomness a little bit so that you get a guaranteed drop on certain camps. So that's good. I think there is still going to be some variation where some people might get one or two extra items. I wish it would just be standardized across the board, but um, it sounds like people should get much closer to the same amount of items over time. Um, and let's talk about ranked. Here's the TLDR on ranked, and then I'm going to get to how to win um, in general right here. Okay, so it's the same ranks as League. You're going to start in Iron, and then Bronze, Silver, Gold, Platinum, Diamond, and then um, so on and so forth. Master, Grandmaster, Challenger. Now, there are no placement games, so everyone, I believe, just starts at Iron, Zero, LP, I think. Because there aren't, I think I read there are no um, placements. There's no correlation with your standard league rank. So, you know, if you're iron in normal League of Legends, standard League of Legends, you could still um, get Challenger in TFT. And you would still be iron in standard League of Legends, but you would be Challenger in TFT. So there's no correlation whatsoever. They have nothing to do with each other. So don't worry about trying to make a fresh account because you're, you know, you think your elo is too low or whatever and you don't want to get penalized for that. Um, speaking of which, you don't have to level up to 30 either to play this. So you can have multiple accounts if you want to, for whatever reason. You can be level 1 as of right now, as of this recording. Um, you can be level 1 on a smurf and still uh, enjoy the game. You don't have to get any runes. You don't have to buy any champions. Everything is all included in the game. So I think this is a much, much better model overall moving forward to compete with games like Fortnite because it's so accessible. You can just pick it up and play it anytime you want. There's very, very few barriers to entry. In fact, there's none unless you just want cosmetic stuff. So anyways, that's good to know. And then uh, there's no promotion series, so you just blaze right through. It's almost like the old MMR system. I don't know why, they, if there's no promotion series, why don't you just do a straight MMR system? I think the reason is they just want something analogous to their base game because people understand that. They know what platinum means. They know what gold means. Whereas someone may not necessarily know what 1822 MMR means, right? Unless you're like really old school and you know that that's like high gold on the cusp of platinum, which used to be 1850 back in like season two. Um, but they're just doing that just for um, comparison so that people understand what's going on. Um, so there's no series, so you just go straight through 100 and your um, XP just carries over and you just keep going up. When you're um, on your way down, I think it'll stop you at zero, but if you lose one game at zero, then um, you get demoted immediately. So there is no demotion protection anymore either. So there's going to be a lot more flexibility. Um, now, I was worried this might overall inflate um, LP because you'll stop at zero on the way down, which will break straight through on the way up to 100. Uh, but it does affect you still have a hidden MMR that will determine your matches. So if you do that a lot, if you know you keep winning to go through 100, and then you break back down, and you keep losing at zero LP after you break through, then your MMR will get lowered, um, and you'll start gaining and losing, um, you know, adjusted amounts, right? So you'll start gaining less and losing more if your MMR uh, goes upside down. Okay. Um, so how it works also is you don't have to win every single game in terms of like you don't have to come in first place to rank up. If you finish first through third, you're going to be gaining um, some LP that makes a difference, right? So first gets the most, third is still going to get a pretty decent chunk of LP. And then if you end up in fourth, they didn't really say, they say that's a gray area. So they said it's likely you're going to gain a very small amount, like maybe three LP or something if you're fourth. Then if you're fifth, you're going to lose a very small amount, you know, like maybe three. And then it slides all the way down, right? Whereas if you come in eighth, um, you're going to lose a ton of LP. But if you come in, you know, like sixth or something, then you'll just lose, you know, kind of a, a moderate chunk of LP. So that's pretty interesting. Um, so, yeah, there is luck in there. But if you're a really good player, there's a really high chance you're going to be able to finish third through fourth. 
um, you know, at the lowest in most of your games. So I think that's a really fair way to do it. Um, you can group with up to five people to queue if you're gold and lower. I, I guess they want to keep it. I don't know why they're allowing that in ranked. I guess they just figure that people really can't collude and influence that much because you're working against your friends. You know, if you hand your buddy off, you know, you, d you pass on the items in the carousel and you just allow them to have the good items. Like, you can try to do win trading, I guess, with that. Um, it would require quite a bit of coordination, though. But I think they sh shouldn't even allow it because there will be some people that abuse this because you can get on alts now. Remember, you don't have to get to level 30. You don't have to buy any champions. So, in theory, you could just, like, win trading could be rampant with this um, where you just assign one person like Alex over here. We just decided he's going to win this game. And then... Um, you know, everyone else just throws. I don't know. I'm not sure if that's going to happen. I think it's harder to happen because there will be three other people competing with you there and you can't, like, trade items or anything. Like, you can deliberately try to lose, but you also don't know who you're going to get matched with each round. So you can't just, like, take off all your items if you know you're going to get paired with Alex and then put all of them on if you're going against some guy that's not part of your crew. Um, so I don't know. It's kind of weird. But then in Platinum Plus, it's going to be three people or less so that's much less likely to influence because there will be five other people so i guess they want to keep it fun and friendly add some rivalry in there so we'll see if people abuse it or not they'll probably find a way to abuse it but overall i don't anticipate it'll be that bad um there will be different seasons every year so i, I think a season lasts three months you're going to have rewards every season they haven't announced what those are yet and then your ranked is going to reset every season so it's going to be a much, much shorter season to keep people engaged. So doing all like these really cool things with this game mode that they should have done with Standard League for a long time. Like get rid of the leveling system, give people way more champions, if not all of the champions right off the bat. Um, get rid of like the stupid promotion series, just make it a straight, you just win or lose all the time. Um, you know, have seasons every three months to keep people engaged, don't. Um, you know, have these, like, big lulls and down periods. Um, so, I think it's it's really good. So, hopefully some of this stuff, if it's very successful, they'll move some of it over to the standard league. Okay, so how to win in league. So, now that we know what ranked is, now that we know what some of the major changes are here, there are two core strategies you need to understand to win in League of Legends. You need to win streak early or loss streak early. Both of them are viable. Both of them have their perks. Um, and their cons. So let's go over both of them. So the win streak is pretty straightforward, right? You're beating everybody, you're winning, you're getting gold every round, you get win streak gold up to three if you're winning a ton, in addition to the one gold that you would normally win every round. So you'd want to go for something that's kind of early game that has really powerful bonuses early on. So Knights is a strong one. That 20 damage block before people get a lot of items and a lot of higher tier champions is very good. Nobles is very good. Um, you're going to win almost everything regardless early on. Because that noble buff will just hard carry you. And then assassins are really good too because you can get their bonus online fairly early with like Pike and Kha'Zix and then Zed, just like a tier one and then two tier two champions. Um, so you can get that going and that is really good against a lot of people who are going to be going for like AD carries. So you're going to be seeing like a lot of Varuses, like Tristanas, Veins, things like that. Assassins are great against that early because you can't like position to stop the assassins. You just don't have enough champions. You know, late game, you can just pack it into a corner and it makes it really hard for the assassins to get onto your carries if you position correctly. But early game, when people are only going to have, you know, like four champions or something, it's going to be really, really hard to protect that 80 carry. It's going to be on the back. Um, so that makes assassins very, very strong early. They do have uh, a Kali at tier four, which really like puts them in an overdrive if you want to go all out assassins. But even without that, you don't have to hard commit too much early on. You can just grab those assassins and go on a pretty strong win streak. Now, if you're trying to go on a win streak, you're probably going to want to buy some XP and then power reroll. So, um, I think, and there's a chart over here. Let me grab this. This one. So, keep in mind that as your level goes up, you're less likely to get certain uh, champions. So, if you're looking for a tier 1 champion... Once you get to level three, um, which is the uh, two XP or whatever, then you drop down to a 65% chance. And then once you complete the six XP, 
um, then you go down to a 50% chance to get a level one champion. And that's in each slot, each of your five slots, you're going to have um, just that percentage chance. So every slot will give you a 50% chance to roll that type of champion. Um, so if you're going for the early game strategy, you a lot of people will try to get to a rank three like powerhouse champion early. So like a rank three Nidalee or a rank three like Kha'Zix or two of the strongest ones early. Um, so if you do that, if you're win streaking, that's almost going to guarantee that you're going to keep winning, but you're sacrificing some of your econ later. So you really need to win. And you need to put all of your items on that hard carry champion a lot of the time too. So if you're trying to go for that tier three Kha'Zix, you need to load him up and build items that are going to be very, very good on Kha'Zix. So something like Phantom Dancer, Frozen Heart, um, Bloodthirster, just some things that are going to allow him to stay up on that back line and just start whittling people down. So the pros of this are you get the extra one gold and you get win streak, uh, and you have a high chance of getting at least one rank three champion if you power roll for it. And most people, I believe, power roll... Um, like somewhere around like before you get to level five when you're level four because you're still going to have a 50 percent chance and you're going to have up to five rounds before you get to 10 experience where you can keep power rolling um so by power rolling i mean that people just roll all of their gold usually down to about 10 sometimes people go lower than that and they just try to get rank two with whatever their comp is and then they um will store and hold the potential to get some select few rank three champions I would only try to do that with Tier 1 champs. I've seen people do it with Tier 2 occasionally. It's really rare. It's super risky. But Tier 1 champs, um, you have a chance. I will say you want to scout out the other people if you can. That's a bit advanced. But just look and see if other people are also trying to power roll for that one champ. Because remember, there's only a set amount of certain champions in the game. So the Tier 1 champs, there's only 39 total Kha'Zixes. Um, and it's going to take 9 of them to get a Tier 1 champ or to get him up to rank three, rather. And so if you see there's one or sometimes even two other people trying to power roll for Kha'Zix or trying to power roll for Nidalee or one of these other, like, really strong early game champs, it's very, it's much, much less likely that you're going to get it. Because if they have, like, you know, seven Nidalees and you also have seven Nidalees, you're taking a lot of power out of that pool. You know, you're going to be lowering your chance. If they have seven, you're lowering your chance by... I don't like 20% or something. I don't know the exact number offhand, but it can, it makes it much, much more risky. So, you know, sometimes people get around this by trying to power roll champions that aren't like S class champs that can still be kind of good. Like, you know, maybe they try to go for a vein, um, who, if she gets to tier three can be pretty good. But anyways, that's what you're going to be trying to do. You try to get someone to rank three usually, or at least get your whole squad to rank two. If you're running with a light squad, um, like assassins or something like that. Like I said, you can get those pretty early, pretty quickly because it's just a bunch of um, tier one and tier two champs. The cons of the strategy are you have really bad carousel picks, so your items are probably going to be trash. Your champs are going to be trash early. Um, you can make it work, though. I mean, if you have high-level champions early on, sometimes it doesn't really matter what you put on Kha'Zix if you have a rank three Kha'Zix, um, you know, when most people are just hitting level five or something like that. So just keep that in mind. It's you're not gonna see the recurve bows. You're not gonna see spatulas. Like you better have a strategy for using um, negatron cloaks and uh, giants belts and like fioras and stuff like that because that's what you're gonna be stuck with. So you're gonna have bad carousels. You are kind of shooting yourself in the foot potentially with your econ later. So if you break the win streak, if someone does manage to beat you on a round, it's gonna hurt badly because you've just spent you know. 10 to 20 gold like re-rolling um and sometimes you can get away with that if you're winning every round because you're going to start getting you know two extra gold per round or even three extra gold per round if you go on a huge win streak so sometimes it can be worth but it's very risky because your econ could be bad later and then um you're going to have a lower chance to get to tier four and tier five champs if you don't win streak because your experience is going to be so low because you're going to stick around and not level up um to tier five early you're going to be you know hanging out there for as long as possible typically so you can get your re-rolls and then you might roll later so just keep in mind that like to have a reasonable chance at a tier four champ you really need to be level six and that gives you a 10 percent chance but then it's even better if you can get to like level seven or level eight and if you're trying to get to a tier five champion um 
you know, you need to be at least level 8 before you have any realistic chance of getting to tier 5. So just keep that in mind with your strategy. So if you're trying to, like, early game, like, you know, power level so that you can get your Lucian leveled up, who's, like, a tier 2 champion, and you're going for, like, 6 nobles, and you burn through, like, 20 gold early to try to get your Lucian, then you're not going to be seeing that Kale probably in that game because you're never going to get to rank 8 where you have a reasonable chance unless you get super lucky at, like, level 6 with, like, that half a percent or the 2% at level 7. So... Um, lower chance for higher tech champions. You're not going to have as many champions on the board because you're not going to be as high of a level. Um, you're going to have a weaker econ, but you will be able to steamroll, especially if you have decent items early. You will be able to steamroll everyone if you get a um, rank 3 champ. Okay, how to lose streak. So this one's a little bit tougher to pull off, but um, some of the best ways to go for this are if you have pirates. They are adding TF into the game on this patch as well, who is a tier 2 pilot, or pirate rather. Uh, which is really handy. So now you don't have to run GP, who sucks. Uh, and he's rank three. So now you actually have a pretty decent build path with Graves, who's respectable, Pike, who's respectable, and then Twisted Fates. Going to be all right. He's not going to be insane, but he's still pretty good. He's kind of like a utility champ. He can give mana back to your team or do AoE damage or stun somebody for a decent chunk of time. So he's all right. Um, but he does allow you to get that pirate bonus. And I say the pirates are really good. Because you get the extra gold every single turn. Or you have a chance for extra gold every turn. And so if you go on the Lost Streak, you're kind of doubling down on the gold. You're getting the extra gold from the Lost Streak. And you're getting the Pirate Gold. Um, so that can be handy. So as you lose more and more games, you do get the same amount of gold bonus. It's symmetrical with the Win Streak. The only difference is in the Win Streak, you actually get one gold just for winning the round. In addition to your Streak bonus. So you are going to end up with more gold doing it that way. But with the Lost Streak, you make up for that because you have really good carousel rounds. So if you can get down near the bottom of um, the standings, then you're going to have like first crack at getting that recurve bow, first crack at getting that spatula. That's a really good strategy is to try to lose early so that you can go for the double spatula force of nature, which is really overpowered late game. Um, so especially if you get a spatula on your first carousel, like right when the game starts, then you might want to highly consider trying to lost streak down early just so that you can get a second spatula on your second carousel. Um, if one shows up. So if you're in last place and one shows up, you have a really good shot of being able to get it. Um, so early on, there's not like super powerful champions you need to pick up. It's usually about items for the first couple of carousels. But even if you like stay kind of like in the middle of the pack or kind of the lower end of the pack later on, you can get like primetime picks. You just might see that brand that can totally make your comp or like the NAR that can pull everything together for you or the Akali. Like sometimes there can be really good picks um, in and of themselves to where, you know, or you see that misfortune or something. Um so most people pick for items, but it's, you know, by the time you get to the second or the uh, the third or the fourth carousel, rather, um, sometimes a champion can be very relevant as well. And just remember that your HP really doesn't matter that much early on. Um, some people freak out if they start losing or they get overconfident if they're winning all the time. Uh, I'm sure you all have seen this. Anyone that's played this game, um, you see people come back from like six HP, you know, all the way back and win the whole game. Because it doesn't really matter. Like, nothing says you have to take damage. If you get the right comp down and you just lock it down, you have the right items, the right comp, and it's just locked in place and you have good positioning, you can probably just steamroll everybody if no one has a good counter for it. So, um, think of your health as a resource. It's just buying you time to save up with your econ, to get some money for the lost streak. You're investing it to get a better carousel pick. Um... And I would say if you're going for a lost streak, I wouldn't commit your items unless you're just losing really hard and you just need to preserve some health because the amount of health that you lose um, is not only dependent on whether or not you win or lose, but it's also dependent on how many champions they have left and how strong those champions are. So if you lose and they only have like one champion left, you're barely going to take any damage. But if they have like six champions left, you're going to get slammed. Um, so you might need to put some items on and just try to, like, barely lose. Um, but that's a really nice thing with this build. You know, when you're going for the win streak build, you have to go for, like, immediate power on your tier 1 champion. Whatever's good on Kha'Zix, you need to get it, right? You can't save, 
um, you know, that rod for a death cap later. You've got to turn it into something that's going to be good, like, right then, right? Like, a you know, a Spear of Sojin or, um, you know, something like that, right? Um, but if you're going for the Lost Streak, you have the flexibility to sit there on a bunch of items and just kind of wait and see where your comp is going. You know, do you want to spend that rod on the Spear of Sojin? Do you want to spend it on death cap? Do you want to spend, um, you know, your recurve bow on a Gensu's? Gunblade, do you want to spend it on uh, Phantom Dancer? Do you want to spend it on Rapid Fire Cannon? All of this can vary dramatically depending on which champions you want to use and how you want to, um, you know, carry with that comp. So, and keep in mind, like, yeah, you can put, you know, you can put some of those items on champions that you think are going to be disposable, but sometimes you're not really sure what's going to be disposable if you don't know, like, which comp you're going to go for. So you might think that Cassidy's really disposable, so you can put a couple of items on him, but then it turns out you actually want to keep him because you got some really good sorcerers. Maybe you got a whole bunch of Lulus, you leveled her up, and then you pulled like a Karthus or something, and you're like, you know what? I want to go for some sorcerer splash here with this build. Now I've got these items stuck on Cassidy. I don't want to get rid of him though because, you know, he's he's integral to my comp. So it can be kind of awkward if you put a bunch of items on a champ that you think you're going to get rid of and then it turns out that you actually want to keep them because of the way the game's kind of unfolded. So it's interesting. So don't feel like you have to commit your items if you're trying to lost streak. The pros, you can econ hard and save those items for visibility so you can kind of see where your comp is going. You'll have a lot more options. You'll have more rerolls later because you're not rerolling early. And because you're rerolling later, you're going to have much better shots at the higher tier champions. So you can actually use those rerolls, um, you know, later on to go for the brand or to go for the Gnar or, you know, whichever, the Draven. Whatever you want to use as your, like, primary carry, if it's tier 4, you can use the rerolls for that rather than using all those rerolls to try to get the... Um, the eighth and the ninth Cossacks. So it just depends. Both strategies can work. I tend to favor the econ storing up, you know, trying to power level up to seven and eight at a reasonable pace and then using all of my rerolls there on the, like, just try to fish for the key tier four champs. But there are other strats that can work. Okay, so let's talk really quickly just about um, best combinations in general. Now, keep in mind, this is a very diverse game, and there are lots of different things you can do, but I'm just going to give you some ideas that I think are very common that I've tried a lot and have been very successful with and that I've seen other people try as well and had some success with it. So uh, just keep in mind that early on, anything that's ranked 2, like you need to put it on the field. Okay, so... It's much, much better just to have two rank two champions out there or three rank two champions that have no synergy whatsoever than to have like a really weak synergy. So don't just put your tier ones out there to get nobles. If you have like all tier ones, like a tier one Garen, you know, tier one Lucian, tier one Vayne, don't put it out there just for nobles if you also have like, you know, a tier two Kassadin, tier two Kha'Zix, and tier two Graves. Like you want to put those tier two champs out there because they get a lot of extra stats, even if they don't have any synergy. So, just keep that in mind, especially for, like, the really early rounds. Um, but, okay, some of the more popular openers. So, Wilds, I think, are still going to be one of the best. It has been nerfed, but Warwick and Nidalee are just it's just really OP. I think those are some of the best Tier 1 champs. Um, let me pull them up over here. Let's kind of show you what I'm talking about. So, Warwick has really good stats early on. Um He's got the 30 armor, which is really important. Uh, he has a pretty good disable ult that also heals him, and he has 600 base health. And he has um, wilds, which means if you have one other wild with him, like Nidalee, he's going to get to 35% extra attack speed, which is massive. And then he pairs really well together with some of these brawlers, like the Rek'Sai gives him 300 health, or the um, you know the Braum or the Cho'Gath, Volibear, and these champs can go into different comps. So. He's just really flexible. He's got a good early game trait that he can pick up really easily that's very powerful. And then he also has kind of some uh, mid to late game synergies that he can um, get with other comps. So it's a pretty good investment to spend time on him early. And then Nidalee is similar. Um, she's very strong. I think she's probably the strongest tier one champion right now. I mean, maybe at least might challenge her. Um, we'll see as the patch unfolds, but... As of right now, she's so good. She's ranged, so she starts off. Um, and because a lot of the good, like, bruiser, or a lot of the good chance people are going to be running early are going to be bruisers, so it's going to be, like, your Warwicks, your Garens, your Dariuses. Um, 
stuff like that is all very popular. And then a lot of like the um, the ADCs aren't going to be that strong early. There aren't that many ADCs at level one to begin with. Um, and the ones that are there are usually not going to be that great until much later once they get some items behind them. So Nidalee's great. She's got the range. And when she turns into the, uh, the Cougar, especially if you get her to rank two, which is not hard to do, then she does 90 base damage uh, with an extra 70 there. So it's 160 extra damage, which is massive. Every auto attack early on, you know, most champs are going to be doing like 90. She's doing almost double that. And she heals herself and an ally for 375. Remember, she only has 900 health to start with. So that's like healing for the equivalent of 80% of her health and turning into this cougar permanently for the most part that just does a ton of damage. So she's really OP. And then later on, uh, she's got the wild bonus as well. But she also has Shapeshifter, which once again, Elise is getting stronger now. So you can pair her with Elise. And then kind of in the mid game, you can grab a Shivana if you want to go for the shapeshifter bonus. You don't have to, uh, but it's on the table. And then obviously, if you get something like Nara or Swain, that's really good for later on in the game. So really, really good opener. And uh, so you have great synergy with Brawler, with Warwick and a bunch of different comps. You have shapeshifter with Nidalee, some different comps. You can transition into uh, four wild if you get Nar. I mean, there might be some circumstances if you're trying to go assassins where you could run... Um, Rengar as well. That'd be kind of weird. It's going to be hard to get to four wilds if you're going assassins, but you know, it's something to think about. Usually you don't go Rengar, um, but it's possible. So you're going to need a magic 80 carry to go with wilds typically. Um, you know, Nar can, Nar can do all right. Like he is pretty strong, but he's kind of a role player. Like you need some big damage. So if you're going for a magic damage champ, I think like going traditionally Aurelian Soul, so you'd go Shivana plus Aurelian Soul, you get the Shapeshifters, and then Soul plus like one other Sorcerer, like a, um, a Lulu or something like that can give you the Sorcerer bonus as well. That build has been nerfed with the Soul nerf, but it still can work really well if you get the right items for it. Um, or you can do Brands. You can do four Wild and then transition over into Elementalist. That would require seven champs, but late game, it could definitely work. You'll be a little bit light on tanks if you do that, but you do have Daisy to help you tank, and then Warwick can um, tank for you as well. So that can work. I've been successful with that. Um, you want to try to Econ to sort of build up. You need Nar for that to work, obviously, with four wilds. You can do Rengar, but he kind of sucks in a lot of circumstances. You really, really want Nar. Um, and then just save up for, like, Shoujin, Deathcap, Rapid Fire Cannon... Um, that would be the kind of stuff you'd put on your carry, whether it's Soul or Brand. Um, or you can put a Phantom Dancer on uh, Warwick to help keep him up a little bit in the early game. So that can be pretty viable as well. Uh, another opener that's really popular is like Cassidan plus Kha'Zix. Both of these, very strong early game. Uh, Cassidan nullifies a lot of uh, the other melee champs that have pretty decent ults. So like your Dariuses, your Warwicks, um, your Garens. He can hold up pretty well against them um, in the early game. And he counts as Void, so you can combine him with Kha'Zix plus either Rek'Sai or later on in the game Cho'Gath to get the 50% armor reduction, which is very, very nice with Assassins. Um, or he's Sorcerer, which, especially with TF coming into the game, could be something really relevant. So you could do something like Kassadin plus um, TF plus Lulu or something early on. Then you could go Pirates, or you could go, um, I don't guess... You yordles would work with that but it, it just kind of opens up a lot of doors since tf's in there mostly with pirates so i do find myself sometimes wanting to do like three um three mages three sorcerers or whatever and he's one of the only like tanks that you can get with that build so it's pretty good and he is basically a tank i mean people forget about that or they don't really think about it that much i think but he is very very difficult to kill in a lot of circumstances because every time he attacks he gets a shield so if you get him ranked two it's 40 extra damage per hit even if you only land like five hits that'll take you up to um 200 extra health which would be almost 1200 health so that's about as tanky as level one cho if you want to think about it in that way now obviously he's not going to have as big of like an ultimate as Cho does because he doesn't have an ult, but he stops the enemy from ulting. 
Um, and because he gets this shield every single time he attacks, then he scales really well with any sort of healing or any sort of defensive items that he has. So it's great to put like a Phantom Dancer on him, uh, Bloodthirster, Shoujin, uh, or not, not Shoujin, sorry. Do not put Shoujin on him. Uh, Ginsu's rather. So he's an interesting champ. He can be pretty good. And then Kha'Zix is potentially the best level one champion out there it's really close so like i explained earlier like you just can't position around this guy early he's gonna get to your back line and he just does an absurd amount of damage when you get him to rank two it's 600 damage um to that back line which will you know take off 75 percent of their health <clears throat> a lot of their time and so he just does a ton of damage um and with void you know he can shred their armor eventually so very very strong and then you know obviously if you get him upgraded to rank three he gets a ton of health 1800 health and then you know can deal up to that 800 damage and does much higher dps as well so he's a really really good candidate for trying to go rank three if that's something that you're interested in and then he also combines well with some of the other assassins most notably kind of in the early game zed and pike but then you can transition into a collie later on so Overall, pretty good build. Um, it's good if you want to go for win streak strategies just because Kha'Zix is so strong early and because um, Kassadin's so strong early as well. And they work pretty well in multiple. So if you can have a couple of Kassadin's or a couple of Kha'Zix's on the field if you want to, um, especially if you throw in like one Rek'Sai. So, you know, it'd look kind of weird, but you could have like Rek'Sai, um, Kassadin, and then like double tier two Kha'Zix's and they, it would probably still do pretty well. Um, in the early to mid game because they would all still benefit from void as long as you have three voids out there So pretty good if you try to go a collie later I think archangels is extremely good on her basically like every time you attack then you're gonna ult Because um, it refills 25 mana and her ult costs 25 mana So it's really really nice death cap is also good on a collie Don't forget that for some reason a collie's ult can crit so, you know, if you put a bunch of AP on her, like a death cap, or you have the assassin bonus, um, and she lands that crit with the assassin bonus, especially if she has, like, a lot of AP, like the death cap, it'll just, like, delete people. Like, I've crit people for, like, over 2,000 or four before, with just, like, a couple of items on a collie, with the, um, the six assassin buff, so it can get pretty nasty pretty quickly. Just if you're doing assassins, do not do Zephyr. I've been screwed over so much by that item. It just really messes up your positioning. Because sometimes it'll Zephyr the person on their back line. Um, or Zephyr someone just like in the middle of their comp. And then you won't be able to jump to get really good placement on their back line. So do not run Zephyr. I messed that up. Because I was thinking, oh, well, what if I, you know, Zephyr somebody for five seconds. And my assassins jump on them, kill other people. And then we kill the person who was Zephyr. It's like, yeah, it doesn't work that way. What usually happens is it screws up your positioning, so you end up jumping on the front line and dying to their tanks. So do not Zephyr if you're doing Assassins. Um, if you go in Sorcerers, you can go with a Lulu carry. So if you want to go for something like Kha'Zix, um, and then just, like, drop off the... Or go Cassida and drop off the Kha'Zix later, and then just throw in, like, a, um, a Lulu with an Ari or, like, a Lulu with a Twisted Fate or whatever and you want to make Lulu your carry, she can actually carry really, really well, <laughs> strangely enough. Uh, Spear of Sojin, Archangels, and Gensus would be where you want to be. It's just so hard to kill people with that Tier 2 Lulu. She's just constantly buffing up uh, their health, so that can be pretty rough. Um, Gunslingers are another one that I've been using more and more with mixed results. It just kind of depends in the mid-game on some different factors, but I think they can be really strong. In the right circumstances. I've placed in top three several times using Gunslingers. Um, Graves, very good early. Especially if you put red buff on him. like uh, Because your buckshot deals multiple damage to all kinds of people around you. Um, and so it applies red buff to everybody. And he's pretty good um, with things like Bloodthirster as well. Because when everyone gets hit, it heals him for that very large amount. And then uh, you can throw Phantom Dancer on him as well. So And Titanic Hydra. There's a lot of stuff that just does AoE that's really good because um, his Buckshot counts as hitting everybody. So it applies all these on-hit effects. So I think Graves can be very strong early. And then you can pair him together. I think Lucian's good. Uh, he gives you some mobility. He's pretty good against Assassins on the back line because he can constantly reposition. It makes it very difficult for them to stick to him. Or you can do Tristana, who I'm not like as big of a fan of Trist, but if you really need her, you can use her. Um, 
but you're likely only going to have two of them, two gunslingers for the majority of the game. You can pick up GP and get all four. I guess if you're going pirates, maybe you could do that, but um, I feel like GP is pretty bad, but it does work really well with pirates, gunslingers do, because um, two of them are going to be pirates, so you're going to have, um, or three of them actually, you're going to have GP, and then you're going to have graves, and then you're going to have misfortune later on. So you can't, they do work really, really well together. Oh, thank you. Ha ha ha. Ah, ha ha Is that fun? Yeah, are you going to be ready to go on a trip tomorrow? Hi, camera. Yeah. You say, oh, you saying hi, camera? You say hi, camera? She, she said it earlier. She said hi, camera. Um... But anyways, so Gunslingers can be good. Great synergy with Pirates. Um, great AD carry options. Um, it's really good with the kind of Econ build that I'm going to recommend as well, which is where you Econ hard up to level 8 a lot of the time because that's going to give you like a very good chance when you're power rolling at level 8. You're going to see at least one Misfortune a lot of times. Oftentimes, you can even get a Tier 2 Misfortune if you get enough rounds for it. Um, so... I think that it's pretty good if you're going for an Econ strat. And then if you're doing the Misfortune carry, which I recommend with this build, just because she is so, so strong with items later on like that, her ult will just melt people. If you want to do the Misfortune carry, um, then I would just go Rapid for a Cannon, Archangels, and Shoujin. Um, you can do a Graves carry if you want as well, especially if you're wind streaking early. Just put like Red Buff, Titanic. Phantom Dancer, Bloodthirster, some combination of those items on him. And that can be pretty legit. He can completely tear up lines by himself. Um, especially if for some reason you want to go for rank 3 on him, that can work. Um, and then... Um, you can also combine it with elementals or sorcerers, which I highly recommend that you want to get some sort of uh, magic to go with this because you're very susceptible if they have very high armor champions or if they're going something like yordles or knights or, you know, some of these other things that are going to be very resistant to physical damage. Um, it's really nice to have the AP. Also, you don't have a lot of AoE with this. You have a little bit. M Misfortune helps out with that. But if they have, like, a Draven on the back line that's just wailing away on you or, like, a really fed Varus or something, you're going to have a hard time getting to them with this build because you're not going to have Assassins and you're not going to be able to crack their front line fast enough because you're not going to have enough AoE damage. Um, so having something like Elemental so that you can bring in the brand and, like, uh, an Anivia or a Cannon or something can be a really good idea. I guess you could do sorcerers as well, especially with TF being a sorcerer. Maybe you could bring in like a Lulu to help out a little bit, or um, you know, if you pull a Karthus later, or maybe something like a Relian Soul as a sorcerer. Um, you could have some decent options in there. So it's pretty good. I think it's a pretty good build. It does capitalize on Misfortune really, really well late game. The Lucian and. Um, the graves can definitely be really good so i think it's a definitely a respectable opener and it has some good transition points uh demons so this is going to be kind of a newer one for this build because elise is going to be a one star but i think you can go elise and Averis. i think that's going to be great with elementals and glacials later because remember Varus counts as a demon so he goes well together with brand as well as elise as well as like swain late game if you manage to pull a swain and then uh, he's also a ranger. So if you want to put him with Ash, um, then they can buff each other's attack speed up. So if you have like Varus, Ash, Brand as your cornerstone, then um, that'll give you demons. And then you can just get a couple more glacials. Even with just like Lissandra, that'll give you glacial, demon, and rangers. Three champions, three different buffs. That's powerful. Um. And so I think he, Varus in particular, is very strong by himself, and he has a lot of good synergy with elementals and glacials. At least being tier one means you can feel like pretty comfortable, go, like building Elise and Varus, because you're probably going to see quite a few of them early. Um, if you're going for the Varus carry, you'd want to do rapid fire cannon, Gensu's, Bloodthirster. 
if you're going for a brand carry with that build, you'd probably want to go Rapid Fire, Archangel, Shojin, and Decap. Both of them can carry hard, so just depends on what you need. Maybe, like, if you have flexibility, see who's doing really well on the enemy team. If, you know, they have something like Dragon Claw, like, yeah, the Dragon Claw, or if they're going, um, like, Dragons with Shivana and Aurelian Soul or whatever, if they're going to be immune to magic, maybe do the Varus. If, you know, you see that they're rocking a lot of armor, they have knights or yordles or something like that, maybe go with brand. So, I think there's a lot of flexibility, and this is a really good kind of splash opener. So, you'd obviously have to pair this together with some kind of tank, but you could throw Elise Varus together with, you know, Darius Garen or, um, like, Warwick Nidalee. Um, that would give you two shapeshifters if you do Nidalee, and then you could throw in just like a Shivana at Tier 3 or something if you really wanted the shapeshifter bonus. So, very flexible, lots of good stuff to go there. Um, late game pivots. These are things that you can do like really late game. Um, so these, this is what I would recommend. These are the four things that I would try to do early and just think about some of those transitions that we mentioned before. Uh, you know, you can do nobles, you can do knights. It's just they just I feel like they don't transition very well early on, but they can give you a good sort of um, early game setup if you want. And then you could try to go for something cute like Yordles, I guess. But I think these are going to be the four most common ones that I see and also the four strongest. And they're pretty good. So kind of your mid to late game pivots. I think Elementals is the strongest thing to get. I called this um, like a couple of weeks ago with Glacial Elementals. But you can actually fit these into almost any build. It's just a, an easy to pick up three set. Um, it's a tier two champ with Lissandra and then Kennen's tier three, Brand's tier four. If you grab these along the way, it's just so strong. They all do really uh, pretty respectable magic damage. They're all elementals, so they charge their mana twice as fast. And then they also um, summon up Daisy, who has like 2,000 health or something. It's just this mega tank. Um, go ahead and take those off. Although that was, was kind of fun. Um, but yeah, so I still think elementals are going to be really big. Um, you know, splashable with the demon off a of brand is the most common one, but you can do glacials with Lissandra or Anivia, although you don't really have to. So, just three champs, really easy to pick up, very strong in the late game. If you see a brand, I would highly try to do this. Um, you can go full wild plus some kind of magic damage. That's Nidalee, Warwick, Ari, and Nar is a pretty good finisher. Um... And then, like, historically, it's been Aurelian Soul plus Shivana, but you could sub that in with some other... Like, you could sub it in with Elementals if you want to, or just some other kind of carry. Um, yeah, Demons, if you have Elise, Varus, Swain, Brand, you can throw some of those in there as well. Um, and then we have the Glacial Elemental that I mentioned before. So usually you would go for Glacial, so like Lissandra, Ash, Volibear, Sej, if you get a... Um, and Anivia, you can substitute her in for one of these. But, like, that has a lot of synergy with other kits. Like, the Lissandra works really well with, um, in the elemental build, Ash works really well with Varus um, in terms of getting the uh, Rangers online. Volibear works well with things like Warwick for Brawler bonus or Cho'Gath for Brawler bonus. Sejuani can be very strong. She does have Knights. So if you did go for, like, Darius Garen early, you can substitute out the Darius for a Garen. Or um, for a Sejuani. Or vice versa. You could keep the Darius. Go for the Sejuani. And then if you have a Draven. Then you can do Imperials with Darius. So it just fits in really well with a lot of different things. So I think that Glacial is definitely something to look at. Glacial sucks early. Because there's no Tier 1 Glacial I don't believe. And then the Tier 2 is just um, Lissandra and Braum. Braum's terrible. And Lissandra is like alright. But not that great. Um, so... Glacials don't really start coming online until Tier 3 when you can start getting, um, like, Ash and, to a lesser extent, Volibear, and then at Tier 4, the Sejuani. Um, so that's something that you can kind of, you'll just find later on in the game that you can't really set up for early. And then the Draven carry. Draven is one of the most popular carries. That champion's very, very overpowered, especially if you get um, a bunch of items on him and Imperials. So you can put a Darius with him or a Swain with him. So he doesn't require a lot. It's really just Darius, or um, Draven, rather. Um, so, yeah, if you pick up a Tier 4 Draven, you can just kind of hold on to him and just see if you can use him later. Um, he does an extreme amount of damage with his auto attacks, uh, especially if he can crit. Um, you can do Blademaster with him if you want to. Blademaster's not that great in general, but if you have, like, a Shin 
a Darius, and you get like a Yasuo or something later, that could be something pretty easy to splash in there. Um, if you have Darius or Swain, you can potentially get the Imperial bonus on Draven. Um, so, there's some pretty good stuff there. You know, the biggest thing with him is Rapid Fire Cannon, so that you can stay in one place in the corner and just keep catching your axes over and over again. And then anything that life steals predominantly, uh, Bloodthirster is going to be very, very good, just like it is in Standard League of Legends, because the bonus damage that he does does um, apply life steal, even though the bonus damage can't crit. Okay. So, my recommendations, just to kind of wrap up here, uh, I rec now, what I like doing is, like, going for, you know, there's some flexibility here, but I really don't like power rolling that much and just trying to experience up faster. And remember, the main reason that I like to experience up is you get just get more champions on the field, which can help make up for the fact that you're probably going to have lower ranked champs. Um... But the big one is you're actually going to have a high percentage of getting to Tier 4 and Tier 5. And most of these builds really want a, at least one Tier 4 or Tier 5 champion. Like Draven's Tier 4, he can totally take over if you get some Draven's. Brand, super powerful. He can take over at Tier 4. Cho, very useful at Tier 4. Um, <clears throat> Swain, Tier 5, very strong. Aurelian Soul, Tier 4. Gnar, Tier 4. Um... You know, all, at least one champion in all of these builds is going to be Tier 4 or Tier 5. You got the Misfortune here with Gunslingers. Um, you know, Void. If you're going Assassins, you need a Kali. So, I just think a lot of the Lynchpin champions are Tier 4, and I would rather spend my rolls trying to get, like, a Rank 2 Tier 4 champion than Power Rolling to try to get a Rank 3 Tier 1 champion. Um, so... I would buy four experience at level five just to make sure that you get the Krugs. Um, and then that's also going to allow you to um, start getting some reasonable chances to pick up some tier threes. And then I would buy eight experience to go to level six. And that's where you start getting kind of a more realistic chance to get your tier four champs. Um, and, but I would only do that, like, buy the 8 experience if you have at least 40 gold, ideally 50. But if you bought some stuff early and you were kind of trying to be flexible with your build, you might only have 40. Um, and then I would save up and try to get level 7, which is going to cost you the 30 XP. I would try to get level 7 um, and stay over 50 gold, if at all possible, to, to get to level 7. And then once you get like level seven, then you have some choices. The next one is 46, which is a lot. So if you're kind of behind on HP at that point, then you can heavily consider like re-rolling there at level seven. And that's respectable. You're still going to have a 15% chance for your tier four champs. <clears throat> Only a 2% chance for tier fives. Um, so it's just kind of up to you. Sometimes having that one extra champion in there can be a big deal. Depending on what your comp is, you m might get an extra synergy that's really, really strong. To have the extra champ in there, but um, if you don't really have a particularly strong champ that you want to put in, um, you could just wait a little bit longer, or you could start power rolling there if you feel like you're about to lose and you really, really just need to grab some stuff. But I recommend in most games, if possible, try to get to that level 46, buy a lot of gold there. I would break your bank for it most of the time. Um, I would drop down to like 30 gold or something potentially depending on how much you have saved to get to that level eight and the big thing is not only do you get another champion there but like i said you're going to have a much higher chance of rolling on your tier four and um tier five champion so and the 70 experience is a lot i wouldn't recommend jumping up to 70 most of the time unless you're like ultra far ahead because that's like 35 re-rolls that you could do so unless your whole squad is already ranked two you know, I would consider re-rolling if at least three of your champions are only rank one. Like, if you have a rank one brand or a rank one cannon or, like, a rank one, um, you know, some other tier four champ, I would probably start re-rolling. But if you're only looking for one champion, maybe you level up all the way to nine or certainly to eight if you're only rolling for, like, that very last brand or that very last cannon and everyone else is already ranked up. So <laughs> you kind of have to feel it out. But I think in general, that's the best way to go. And then I, in 
my final thoughts are I would not roll for rank three early. I just think it destroys your economy. It's super risky. Um, other people could also be rolling for that. So it can work out. I know we've all seen those games where somebody has like three rank three champions and it just feels really OP, but I mean, it happens, but to me, it seems really risky, but it can work out if you're going for assassins or something that's super early game, just proceed with caution. I think that it, you're going to have a much, much higher chance if you increase your odds of getting those tier four and tier five champions to really make your comp fit together. But that's going to be it. Thank you very much. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. Check out the rest of the content on the channel. Be sure to stop by the Twitch sometime. We'd love to have you streaming starting around 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every night once I get back from vacation on Saturday. And I'll see you next time. Have a great day.